Hi everyone, welcome to my talk on a guide, skip or a jump. Efficiently stream data into your medallion architecture with Apache Hoodie. The medallion architecture provides a systematic mythology for structuring and enhancing data within a lake house, facilitating a smooth transition from raw data sets to actionable insights. By embracing this layered structure, which categorizes data into a bronze, silver, and gold table, um, data is methodically processed, evolving into a purified, more augmented um, assets ready for in-depth analysis. I'm Nadine, I'm leading One House's developer initiatives, and I'm also an Apache Hoodie contributor. I'm active in the community and working on all sorts of stuff. Um, prior to One House, I was at Rockset in Bose, and I'm passionate about bridge bridging engineering product and marketing together to help drive developer adoption. You can find me on LinkedIn at nfarah86, or Nadine Farah, and also on Twitter at nfarah86. If you enjoy today's talk and you're like, yes, this resonates with me, or it's kind of cool what we're talking about, you can tag and follow the Apache Hoodie LinkedIn handle um, with a sentence or two, or maybe a screenshot of what you're what you liked about the the session. Um, the the Hoodie LinkedIn we just started it, and it's LinkedIn.com/company/slash Apache Hoodie. Um, we also have a Twitter handle for Apache Hoodie. You can tag and follow at Apache Hoodie. So one of those accounts, if you like the session, find me after the session if you've done your post and I'll um, find a way to get you the Apache Hoodie sweater swag, which is pretty cool. The link on the QR code is the Hoodie Slack community. We're really active on it and we're constantly growing. So if you are interested in learning more or you want to um, have an async, you can find me on the Hoodie Slack community as well. For the agenda, we'll have an overview of the Medallion Architecture platform and the Apache Hoodie um, platform as well. Next, we'll cover the incremental framework with the CDC feature and how you can achieve fast updates and merges with Hoodie's record level index. Finally, we'll do a walk through on how you can build a customer 360 app with harnessing the incremental processing framework within Hoodie to build um, an efficient um, uh, Medallion architecture. So let's go over the Medallion architecture. With a show of hands, how many of you have heard about the Metallion architecture in some way? So one, two, oh, so all of you are pretty new. How many of you are familiar with like data lakes or have worked with data lakes inside your, okay, so this seems like it's gonna be kind of relevant. Um, so this is, if you've kind of looked at it or kind of Googled what the Medallion architecture looks like, you'll get this like high level architecture and it's kind of seems really simple to implement. Um, uh, like at a glance, you're like, okay, I think I can do this, but let me cover what these steps look like. And then we'll kind of double click into it and, and what these processes really entail. So when data is ingested, it'll be unprocessed and stored in a data lake. I'm sure all of us are familiar with that. Typically in the raw layer or bronze layer, you'll have data duplication, you'll have a change log, you'll have raw events and data. And data typically is unstructured, not processed, no transformation. You're just probably buck loading and, and sending it there. From there, data from there, data will graduate to a silver layer where you'll perform data deduplication, validate the data, orchestrate um, and manage the data like data cleaning, file sizing, and, and, and more. Finally, you'll write some join queries with all the different silver tables you have created. And then from there, you'll create a fact table or a gold table that you can that can be used by AI ML applications, um, downstream analytics, and more. But like I said, this seems pretty simple to do, right? But what does it really take to implement this medallion architecture? This is kind of what it really looks like. And after talking to a few like data engineers and architects and, and, and going over how they're implementing, this is somewhat of what they do. So you first, um, you'll first ingest raw and unprocessed data into the data lake, creating a raw or bronze layer. Um, I'll use kind of raw and bronze layer intercha interchangeably throughout this presentation. From there, you'll do a full table scan to grab all the data, including new updates, and you'll rewrite the entire silver table with the augmented data. In this process, you might use SQL, PySpark, or something else to perform data deduplication, um, manage the data, so cleaning, file sizing, clustering, and more. Um, and then augmenting the data with the examples I gave is a very manual process. You'll have to manage and orchestrate all the processes and ensure there are no concurrency or right conflicts that can lead to data corruption or deadlocks. You might have slow reads. Um, so then after you've done all that, 
You will then do a full table scan and join the silver tables. The join will typically happen in a temp table. If you use Spark, you can create a temp table in Spark. From there, you'll output the results to a parquet file and create a gold a layer or a fact table. On the query engine side, you, can, you will have to do another full table scan to execute the query and return the results so it can be used for analytics or downstream applications. But you can see here, there's kind of this like general theme of scanning the full table or doing full table rewrites. And also this whole architecture is a very like manual process um, where you have to perform the data management services. You have to kind of manage and orchestrate all of the, the data management services yourself. Um, and this is because the technology available help kind of encourage this approach to the medallion architecture and they and it's because some of the, the technologies around kind of lack a few key things and so let's see what these things are and the diagram i have each of the zones have the same kind of services repeated i'll go over what each of these services are and how they affect the medallion architecture so automated table services Many technologies don't offer fully automated table services that can automatically help manage your data and maintain your table's health. For example, in Spark, you might have to run manual compaction, merging smaller files to larger ones, so you can improve the query performance. But you also might have to clean your data or run some cleaning service to run faster analytics so you can improve the storage or be compliant. However, if you need to run these two services at the same point, you have to implement your own optimistic concurrency control mechanism in Spark. So here, if two services are trying to modify a record, one will have to be filled or blocked so the other service uh, until the other service has completed its task. On the incremental framework and index size, um, index side, the incremental ar architecture prides itself on incrementally updating data sets without having to reprocess data over and over again. A key capability that aids in incremental processing is to handle data mutations at record level. This helps avoid reprocessing non-changing data. Also, adding an indexing mechanism can further help quickly process uh, these record mutations um, because indexing helps locate records in the data uh, in the data lake faster and more efficiently. But by not having this, you have to constantly do full table scans, full table rewrites. And if you're working with a small data set, this is like, you will not see any improvement if you probably did this and you were doing full table scans and stuff. But when you get to this terabyte, petabyte, exabyte stage, these inefficiencies become unbearable because what you're gonna to have to do is you're gonna keep throwing compute to your application. Uber had this challenge you know, early 2015, 2016. Um, and at some point it becomes too costly. So what's an alternative way to kind of build and implement the uh, medallion architecture in a more efficient way? So this is a sample architecture with Apache hoodie you can, um, that, you, that, you can, um, that we're gonna talk about today. From there, so what happens is you'll probably, you know, insert, upsert, or bulk load your data into the raw data zone. And then here, uh, hoodie does an incremental pull, just grabbing the changes to update the silver zone or the silver tables here. Um, and similarly, in this case, it's less operational than what you have to do with Spark because Hoodie has its own um, table services that automatically kind of manage and orchestrate all these services, so you don't have to do that. Now, to build a ta gold table, you'll what you'll do is you'll create a temp table like before. You'll perform your join operations where you'll join all these silver tables together, and you'll just do an incremental pull to update the gold table, which is your fact table. They'll be used for downstream analytics, you can use for AI ML apps, update downstream tables and so on. So now that I'm introducing Apache Hoodie, you're probably like, well, what is Apache Hoodie? So let's get a bird's eye view of Apache Hoodie um, and the Apache Hoodie platform. So previously we looked at all the bottlenecks of the medallion architecture, but what about if we just flipped it and you had all these features and services enabled? So Apache Hoodie is a data lake house platform that provides database-like features and services to your data lake, which is unprecedented until this moment. Usually if you deal with data lakes, there's no services. You just write data, it's immutable, and so on and so forth. So with Hoodie, you can fully automate table services that continually schedule and orchestrate clustering, compaction, cleaning, and ensure that, you know, um, and, and indexing to ensure that your tables are always up and ready and healthy in a sense. In addition, you can replace old school batch pipelines with the incremental framework, 
where you can take data updates from an upstream database and then apply role level changes to downstream applications or downstream tables and so on. And as a result, Hoodie's incremental framework allows for faster ingestion and lower processing times for analytical workloads. Hoodie's features and services also enable faster performance. We can go from hours to days to just minute level analytics. So let's take a bird's eye view of the Hoodie platform. So how many of you have heard of table formats before, or familiar with that type of wording? Yeah, so Hootie is much more than just a table format. It's actually a comprehensive platform designed for data ingestion and processing. It's equipped with a range of features and services that aim at maximizing the efficiency of both writing and reading data. So at the foundational level, you have your data lake where you probably store your data. It might be in a parquet or Avro format. From there, on the next level up, you get to this transactional layer of Hoodie. Um, and this is where Hoodie's true power shines. Um, as I mentioned earlier, it offers multiple services like file sizing, compaction, and cleaning. Um, and these services collectively offer significant enhancements to data and table management. Um, table services facilitate handling data at scale, indexes speed up the handling of data or um, handling of inserting records and, and changing the records, and concurrency control ensures consistency of data across multiple operations. But after data has been su successfully ingested and managed, um, after the transactional layer, you get to this like execution layer where Hoodie has this interoperable component where you can integrate popular query engines like Athena, Presto, Trino to query the data. So there is no like locked in vendor in the sense of querying data. There's this openness to, to the Hoodie platform. So now that we have like this bird's eye view of Hoodie, what the platform looks like, I'm gonna, we're gonna double click into the Hoodie um, uh, file layout because it's gonna become important when we talk about the record level index and the incremental processing framework. So a Hoodie table consists of file slices and each slice contains a base file, which is in the parquet format. Um, and the parquet for, and these base files or parquets are produced at some commit or compaction time or instant time alongside with a log file, which is an algo format that contains inserts or updates to the base file since the base file was produced. And you can see that on the top half diagram, what this kind of looks like. So each, uh, when a write comes in, the records are written to the file slices and each record has a key that is mapped to a particular file group. So again, a file group is a group of file sizes. Now let's talk about the advantages of how, why this layout is, this file layout is important for Hoodie. On the right side, um, writing to a Hoodie table, if you have multiple table services running in the background alongside with ingestion, um, these services don't block each other because Hoodie has this multi-version concurrency control mechanism and that's built in. Now on the read side, from the point of querying data, the hoodie, the file layout facilitates the query engine to be able to query a table at a particular point in time. Um, and now you're like, well, where's the time? So let's look at the second half of the diagram where we talk about the timeline and the metadata table. When a record gets written into a file group, Hoodie's timeline also records that commit action that was done in the timeline. The timeline is located in the hoodie.hoodie .hoodie folder and is essentially an event log, like structurally it's an event log. There are different actions that can be recorded on the timeline, such as clustering. If a clustering action has happened, it's recorded in the timeline. If, a, uh, if, uh, if there's a compaction event, it's recorded in the timeline and so on. Um, so everything gets recorded into the timeline. And a key thing to point out in the hoodie timeline is there are timestamps associated with every action along with some metadata about what happened. Now in the diagram, following the timeline is the metadata table. The metadata table is different in timeline in a sense it's an eternal merge on read table. Um, the metadata table is where each partition stores information about the metadata about the file. For example, in the column stack partition, we'll store information about the column min max values, the null values or null counts and so on. And the metadata table also stores file partitions, which stores information about where files are located within which partition. And essentially, the metadata table is a central place for all the metadata. For example, when writes occur to a hoodie table, it, automatic, it automatically gets recorded to the footer of each parquet file, for example, with the Bloom index. Um, and instead of opening and closing a file to see whether a record may exist, Hoodie can just check the metadata table directly and save on this file IO cost. So when a commit happens, the metadata table gets equally updated as well. And you can think of the metadata table as like this big index where if there's file updates or inserts, the metadata table and the timeline also get updated as well. So 
the other thing I want to talk about is that hoodie store state. So hoodie, in the last slide, we talked about the timeline and the metadata table. If a record has an update, the timeline and the metadata table also get updated. But since hoodie maintains a timeline of when an action or write occur on a hoodie table, you can essentially find out what changes occurred in that time range. And so you can grab those changes and then you can update downstream applications um, with just that data using the hoodie incremental framework with its CDC feature. But before I go into that, let's take a look at how Hoodie is being used um, by other companies. Hoodie is proven at massive scale with ByteDance, with TikTok, Uber, Walmart, and GE all use Hoodie for their mission critical apps. For example, at ByteDance, Hoodie is being used at exabyte scale for a single table. And even at this, at this level, Hoodie brings down analytics from days to minutes. Um, one of the ways that Hoodie does this is with this incremental processing framework where it, you can where you can just update downstream tables with just the updates. Um, recently, we introduced the CDC feature in the incremental processing framework with our recent release with Hoodie 0.14.0. And so we're going to cover what this is and how it works, which brings me up to this slide now. Incremental data processing and the medallion architecture. So to recap, Within the medallion architecture, I presented a straightforward and more simplistic approach to constructing your bronze, silver, and gold tables. A standout feature that spares you from conducting full table scans is Hui's incremental framework. Um, using this framework only changes our stream to update downstream tables. And you can see where the incremental framework comes in in the medallion architecture. So it's these points that we're gonna be talking about within the medallion architecture. So to realize the end-to-end -end incremental processing, Hoodie provides a Hoodie streamer to efficiently pull changes from the source, support mutable data and record level updates, and conveniently write the data to downstream syncs all the way from the source to bronze, silver, and gold tables. So here's an example of how you can use the Hoodie streamer to construct incremental processing end-to-end. -end. A common use case is streaming change logs from database like Postgres to Debezium to Apache Kafka. Each message has the before and after image reflecting the changes. Um, the schema is registered to the schema registry. And in the first step, Hoodie streams, streamer gets the new data from the last checkpoint and bulk inserts them into the bronze table or raw layer here. The bronze table contains the exact raw events from the Kafka source for further processing. So no changes or no transformation or nothing has been modified. And you're just bulk loading into the raw, to the raw zone. Next, um, um, another Hoodie streamer is constructed to do any kind of data cleaning and augmentation. For example, users can transform their data by flattening fields, selecting relevant fields with projections, and any other custom transformations that you want to do. Once that's done, the data are upserted to the silver table, which is the clean data set. Once the new changes are landed in the silver table, oops, there you go. Um, the subsequent Hootie streamer job conducts more complex operations with business logics um, that you provide, uh, like SQL provided by you, like joining the dimension tables, or you can join other, other tables as well. Um, after the complex logic is provided, the records are updated to the gold table for data analytics. One of the key functionalities supporting mutable data is the incremental processing. So let's take a deeper look at how Hootie takes the changes handles mutations and stream changes to down to downstream applications. When we look at it under the hood, there are quite a few steps between taking the incremental changes from the source and streaming them to Hoodie, uh, from Hoodie to the downstream applications or tables. To enable immutable data at the record label, Hoodie provides built-in support for locating records um, and the record payload and merging so that the user can customize their inserts, updates, and delete logic. As I mentioned earlier in the talk, Hoodie needs to make sure this consistency between the index and data, so, so the metadata can be used for reading and writing the table. Hoodie also provides automatic metadata management in the Hoodie timeline and the metadata table. Besides managing the data and metadata, Hoodie automatically optimizes the data laid out on storage with small file handling and table services like compaction and cleaning, so that query engines can read well-sized files and improve the performance. Alongside the incremental processing, there could be concurrent writers, for example, backfill jobs to rewrite old data or jobs to delete selective data. So Hoodie provides optimistic concurrency control mechanisms and multi-version concurrency control for different use cases to efficiently handle multiple, a multiple writer scenario. 
So now you may wonder how Hoodie handles the record level mutation, which is necessary for the incremental processing framework. Hoodie provides a payload and merge API for inserts, um, updates, and deletes. So you can so you can customize these uh, these um, classes, for example. So let's take a look at what what this look what this looks like. So let's say we have a oops, let's say we have a table. There we go. Let's say we have a table to store bank accounts. Um, each entry has a UUID, a name, a timestamp, and a balance. Hoodie requires a primary key field to be specified by the users to identify a unique record. Um, and the primary key field here is the UUID. For each incoming data, um, for each incoming data, Hoodie looks at the primary key, which is a UID to identify whether a record is an input, an update, or a delete. An incoming batch one, we have, uh, we have one insert and one update. During the upsert operation, the table is updated by inserting the row with UUID three for me and updating the existing um, record for Ethan's account. For each, for the next incoming batch, the record is marked as the delete and hoodie. And, um, and the second record is an update for the XYZ account. There we go. And now if you look at the results after the op upsert operation, the balance for Ethan's account is not changed. Um, this is because we want to honor the balance of the latest timestamp. In the case, Hoodie looks at the ordering fields. There we go. Uh, looks at the ordering field. So if the if the field comes um, earlier than what the timestamp is, uh, there will be no update to Ethan's record. Um, and so so he won't get twenty dollars out of nowhere. Hoodie also has been some support for event time ordering, which is prevailing in streaming and incremental processing. Once the data mutation is done, Hoodie attaches metadata such as the commit time and file name to each record and also updates the metadata in the Hoodie timeline. Um, these essentially serve as a state for streaming changes from a Hoodie table. There we go. While the record level mutation, the primary key is required for some use cases like event log injection, which inserts your data, Hoodie supports automatic primary key generation so the user doesn't have to actually specify the primary key. And this was actually introduced in this release for 0.14.0 for better user experience. Aside from the existing incremental pools, Hoodie provides a new CDC mode for incremental processing. This provides like a Debezium like change logs with before and after images. Here's a sample code to read the incremental data in the CDC format. For inserts, the before images is, is the null and after images is the new value. For updates, you have the before and after images as well. And if you have a delete, then you the before image is what the pre, the record was before, and then after you provide the delete, there's a null field at the end. So this is how we provide CDC feature like for incremental processing. So you can update downstream applications with this type of information as well. So as we discussed, the record level mutation one required. Um, as we discussed, the record level mutation one requirement is to locate the record. So next, we'll talk about how Hoodie speeds up the upsert operation with indexing and a new record level index. So indexing is widely employed in databases, right? Like RDBMS and data warehouses to locate information quickly. So I think indexing is not new to a lot of us, but this is similar. It's similar to how an index page at the end of the book helps you locate information um, quickly. And data systems indexes are used to reduce IO costs and commonly improve query performance. Hoodie also uses indexes to locate records efficiently and do fast upsets. As you can see in the diagram without index, to apply the updates and deletes, each data file has to be merged against all the updates and deletes from the, for the table. However, with index, Hoodie merges each file with updates and deletes only for that file. So this significantly reduces the IO for merging the data. So in, um, with the index, for example, you have two 25 megabytes files and you have 100, 100 megabytes, right? So if you did 25 plus 25, that's 50 plus 100 is 150. Um, times four, that gives you the value for 600 MB. But in the if you don't have the index, what you're going to have to do is you have 25 megabytes times eight of them plus 100. If you times it by four, you'll get the 1200 megabyte cost. So you can see that it's very, there's a lot of scanning that you have to do throughout each of the files. So Hoodie already supports different indexes for different use cases. And there are two popular use cases shown here. The first one is updating the dimension table for the user input. Usually these generate a lot of random updates and spreading across most files in the table. 
Um, the simple index is best use case for such case. It simply reads the key and location from the table and then finds the location. And the second use case, the input events are mostly ordered by the timestamp. Most events fall into the last few hours and only a small portion of the files are updated um, in the whole file. In this case, the Bloom index is best because it uses the Bloom filter co-located with the data files to prune files instead of reading all keys. This significantly reduces the IO and only a small portion of the files that need to be updated. For large scale data set ranging from tens of terabytes to petabytes, the simple or bloom index may not be enough. So you actually might have to use the HBase index. Um, and it's used to send key lookups to an external HBase table storing the keys um, to location mapping. So the key lookup is blazingly fast, but there's this operational case where you have to manage the cluster. So as you can see, there are a couple of challenges for large data sets using existing indexes. The simple, the simple and Bloom index need to read either the keys or Bloom filters from all files, and they have to read some data or metadata per file. This can be really expensive for large data sets, particularly on cloud storage, because cloud storage enforces a rate limiting IO, which means that you can only send a certain amount of RPC calls to cloud storage to read data. So this can create a bottleneck um, to the index. For the HBase index, although it's performant for larger uh, databases, like uh, it's performant when you have a large amount of data, HBase cluster needs to be maintained. And so it's oper operationally uh, difficult and hard to scale. And this requires like dedicated resources and expertise. So now the question is, can we design a new index that kind of addresses both of these challenges? And um, we did with the record level index. So by design, Find the record level index stores the key to location mapping like HB index, but directly in the table level metadata. So there's no external cluster. To realize that there's a new partition called the record index that's created internally to store the mapping and the index metadata in a few file groups instead of co-locating with other data files. So this drastically, this drastically cuts the, the cost of the file IO. To make the storage footprint low, we design an efficient key to location entry. So a combination of random UUID key and date string partition only takes about 50 to 55 megabytes. And the record level index directly leverages the metadata table for fast index update and lookup. So the metadata table is an internal MOR table, which provides a uniformly fast updates for different um, index metadata. The H file format of the metadata table unlocks fast point lookups. So now let's take a look at how the record level index metadata is organized on storage and how to read and write uh, and how the read and write works. The record level index is stored in the record index partition, the metadata table with multiple file groups, just like a hoodie table. Each file group contains multiple file slices and the latest file slice reflects the latest snapshot. So now you guys see why we talked about the data format earlier on. It comes into play here. Given that the, there we go. Uh, given that the metadata table uses the H file as a base file format, the H file contains the key to value pairs of the record key to location mapping. So let's say we have a set of records that keys to look up. The corresponding file groups are identified by a hash function, and then these keys are looked up in the H file throughout point lookups without having to scan the whole file, which is efficient. When there are updates to the record level index, the metadata table internally writes new log files with the updates. And the log file uses the same log format with each data block using the H file format. So during the lookup, both base and log files are scanned in a point lookup way. And the metadata table periodically compacts the file groups to make sure the performance of reading record uh, level index is good. So we've done a few performances benchmarks on both writes and reads to demonstrate the performance benefit from the record level index. In the first case, we have a one terabyte data set. Each write batch has 200 megabytes of random updates across the table. We compared this performance of the record level index to the global simple index, which is best for random updates. We can see that the index lookup is reduced from around 20 minutes to just one minute after using the record level index. This is because record level index only has to read the metadata for a, file, for a few file groups in the metadata table, while global um, simple index has to scan all the data files. Um, this contributes to over like a 2x improvement on overall write 
you can see as the savings for the index lookup offsets the small additional overhead on updating the record level index. Next, we measure how the record level index improves SQL latency with point lookups. We use the, we use the stored cells table in the TPCDS 10 terabyte data set, and we run two types of queries. One is select star for a particular record key value and a delete operation for a, protect, for a particular record key value. By using um, the record level index for filtering, we see probably like a two to three X improvement with the record level index compared to something with no record level index implemented. Um, and you can see that it gives great performance. Again, we recently released the record level index in 0.14.0. And if you wanted to give it a try or you're looking to kind of build a lake house architecture, um, you can find me after and I can show you how to get started. So now that we talked about the incremental processing framework and the record level index, we're gonna talk about a case study and the medallion architecture with Hoodie's incremental processing. So this is gonna be um, a walkthrough of how you can um, build a customer 360 app implementing the medallion architecture. So here's a sample architecture that we'll walk through today. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it section by section and talk through how, how you can implement something like this. And the first section, you'll have a person probably like signing up for accounts and you'll have another person making purchases. You're going to have some sort of card activity and then you're going to have them clicking on various things. And so when data is inserted in the raw layer, it'll be indexed via whatever index you want to use. In this case, we'll use the record level index. And then from there, we'll bulk insert it into uh, the raw layer. Here's a sample clickstream uh, schema that you might that you might have. You might have like a click ID, a customer ID, a session ID, a URL, and a timestamp. So I feel like this is, you know, pretty easy. You'll have a purchase schema. We have the purchase, the product ID, the quantity that they want to buy, the purchase price, and so much more. You'll have a cart activity. Well, you might have like what the cart status is, whether it's abandoned or not, the activity type, whether they added or removed to cart, um, an activity ID, a customer ID. And then finally, you'll have like some transactional database where you'll store the customer information, first name, last name, and so on. And then from there, what happens is that you'll, to create the silver data, you'll incrementally pull the changes that occur from the raw data set and you'll pull them into the silver layer. From there, you can create a temp table and join various silver tables to build gold table or a fact table. Um, and so in this case, also, this is where hoodies, we talk about the transactional data layer, indexing, file sizing, and more. Um, all this is applied in, in, this, in, the, in the silver layer. Anytime you perform a join, Hoodie will only incrementally pull the updates to the gold table and update the appropriate records without doing a full table scan. And here is a sample join operation that you can use. You can get the customer's first name, last name, the click stream, URL, the timestamp, and the product information. From there, you can join, you can perform a left join on the click stream via the customer ID. You can also do another left join on the purchase based on the customer ID, and you can filter through some time range that you want to specify. And finally, you can order by, you know, whatever field you want to order by here. I'm ordering by the timestamp, the purchase date, and their last name. Once you get the results, you save it in a gold or fact table. And query, you can use a query engine to do efficient point lookups like we've done that we just went, recently went over. And then you get the results and then you can down you can update downstream tables or applications. So this is a roadmap of what's next in Apache Hoodie. Um, so we talked about the 14th release is actually out now, but the record, we have the record level index. We have auto, um, automated generated keys where you can auto generate your primary keys. And we have a new MOR uh, merge on read reader and Spark to boost query performance. We're also actively working on a major release, which is Hoodie 1.x. Um, we're reimagining the Hoodie as a transactional database for your data lake. Uh, we have store format changes to unlock retention of timeline, non-blocking concurrency control, and we have more enhancements to indexing performance, um, better abstraction APIs, and more usability in that end. Um, if you want to be interested in learning more about Hoodie, you can scan to join the Hoodie Slack. We also have our docs and blogs that we keep updated, um, and you can follow us on Twitter or LinkedIn that I shared earlier. And if you like and use Apache Hoodie, please store us on GitHub. And that's it. Thank you. Any questions? Yeah. How does the auto key generation work? Is it just rolling a new ID for 
Yeah, so if you don't specify, usually you'll have to specify it, but if it's not specified, Hootie automatically just generates it for you. Okay. Yeah, and it's um, it's indexed as well. Cool. And the um, metadata table that you mentioned, uh, it made it sound like maybe it has the column stats from the files. And yeah, there's several indexes. You have the file listing, call stats, um, also Bloom filter is in there. Now we have the record level index, all part of the metadata table. Okay. And Bloom filter is also applied when you have a write, each footer of the yeah. files or uh, the parquet files are, yeah. Yeah, and then Bloom filter is generated. And it's also going to the- Metadata, yeah. That's cool. Um, for the uh, row level or record level index, is there any way to like add in additional columns? Oh, what do you mean like additional columns? Um, at the minute, it sounds like you could query, if you were trying to find you know, record with the get the key, you could find that. Yeah. If I also knew that in addition to the key, I also had my favorite two columns that I was going to query by. But I also query by timestamp. Yeah, you can query by timestamp. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But, but have the record level index help me do that. Oh, I see. You're talking about like maybe multiple columns fields. I I think we're probably working like secondary indexes that might be okay. applicable. Yeah, that's coming. Any other questions? Yeah. Uh, so this record level index uh, does it. Is it available for the old table as well? Yeah. Anytime you're any. So what happens in the medallion architecture is you have your raw, you have your raw bronze, silver, and and gold. But anytime you're ingesting data, right? When you there, this is the time that it gets indexed. So once it's in the gold table, it's indexed. But if you use a query engine, like we have support for Trino and Athena. Um, if they have support for the metadata table, you can you can run your queries on that. So it has a if you're on the query engine side, it's a point lookup. Uh, is there only one metadata uh, file for the table, or are there multiple metadata files? Just one metadata table for your for your tables. So how efficient is it to actually look up the record level index in that metadata file? Really fast. That those are the performance uh, the performance metric. It's like instant, basically. So I think on one terabyte of data, it took like a few seconds for the point lookup, so I remember correctly. So it's pretty fast. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay, cool. So uh, if I understood correctly, so for bronze and silver and gold, there are still different tables, right? So yeah, yeah. Basically, you're like you're graduating the data and yeah, you're filtering yeah. it to be more purified. So one table will have raw data, like your event change logs or event data. That's not processed. But then you'll run an incremental pipeline. Like let's say you use AWS Glue or some incremental thing. Then you'll process and create like uh like new tables where you have like the refined data set, and then you'll create your gold table as well. So you have different tables. So what is running my compute for the for the ETL. So what 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 is running this? Uh, Depends. Yeah. So you can use Spark, you can use okay. AWS okay. services, so, so Azure. I'm, so I'm still using I'm still using Spark or you or, can or, 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 or all the same familiar tools. Yeah. It's not forcing uh, because it said at some point who the streamer, who the streamer is not a particular piece of software or not a particular framework that I need to uh, No, no, it's just for streaming data. So you have we support like Spark data source, Spark structure streaming. We have Hoodie Streamer now. So we have a lot of different support. Oh, okay. So you you'll write you'll write you'll use a write uh you'll have like a write a source that you'll use. And there's different write operations that you can implement within that writing source. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. I thought you were gonna say time. <laughs> I was gonna think it's more time, but um so we've data lake houses. Now we've got iceberg, delta, and pretty. Um yeah. like what's um how should I choose? What's the what's what's your take on the I have so many resources for you, but I think it really comes down to your workload. So Hoodie again is be not just like a table format, it's a well, it's basically after this hoodie 1.x feature, it's a transaction, it's like uh, like this transactional like database for your data lake. So one of the, the key features that I talked about is like table service management or table services where you can manually orchestrate and manage your data without, if you've used Spark, you have to kind of do this manually and you have to implement your own optimistic concurrency control mechanisms and 
do all these things. Hoodie actually has that already built in. So you don't have to worry about that. You just kind of have some configs you simplify, you mentioned, and then Hoodie or, or automatically orchestrates and manages that already for you, like schedules it and things like that. Um, so that's one the distinguish, distinguishable feature. The other one is indexing. Hoodie has multiple indexes that we talked about for efficient upsterts. Um, and Hoodie hey, has data mutability, which is key for incremental updates and things like that. Um, I think some of these technologies that you mentioned are like up and coming in that or may not support that. But there's this aspect of supporting streaming like workloads with support for bursty traffic, uh, data deduplication, bursty rights, things like that, um, that Hoodie, Hoodie was built for back in Uber in 2016, because these were the challenges Uber had earlier on. Because if you have a late arriving data, it can span multiple partitions if you have month level partitions. And if you have to go back like two or three months, that's expensive, right, to do. So this is this is kind of like the philosophy of how Hoodie was built was to support these types of workloads in the sense. So it's it's continuing to be built for more of a tr transactional database like for your data lake. Because data lakes are immutable. So this kind of brings mutability back to your data lake. Is there one last question? Is it possible to change this schema, for example, add a new column? Oh, you're talking about like schema evolution and stuff. Yeah, there's support for schema evolution. I think um, compared to support for the other like uh, Iceberg and uh, Delta Lake, there probably could be more improvements made on schema evolution, but we do support it. And I we do we have schema on write and we do support schema on read too, if you have that enabled. All right, looks like our speaker again. Thanks. And if you haven't already, follow us on LinkedIn, Hoodie, uh, uh, Hoodie LinkedIn and Hoodie Twitter. Um, we're working on a lot of really cool technical stuff. The upcoming stuff is uh, Prashant Wasson, who's at Uber, who is also a release manager and a committer to Hoodie. 